I grew up Unitarian Universalist and, and that has really informed my sense of adventure and confidence. How is art an inspiration or a feeling of wholeness and intention? Um, I'm experimenting. I'm not going somewhere directly, but I'm putting something on uh, a clean white piece of paper um, and and begin. And so it isn't begun with the sense I'm going to know how it's going to turn out. So it's going to be, that's another, that's the reason I'm liking acrylics now, because I can have, uh, a, I can paint over that and really uh, change it uh, and step back and look at it from different angles and ponder it and then go and make a few swirls. I would say that my favorite times are using pieces of paper that are large. I, I like things that are big uh, so that I can have the gestural things of either a paintbrush or, um, or the, the pastel. I am an artist. Um, how do I know that I'm an artist? Uh, well, I, I own a lot of paints and brushes and I have a, a space and I get an idea and I think that I would like to explore and spend some time using my materials. And if it's going well, I'm very, uh, I don't like interruptions. Um, and it is a, um, it is something that I paint to be surprised. I don't know how it's going to turn out, and that's fun. And I am a, um, I started in an unusual way, one of my best friends told me, in that I realized right away that I could not paint something that looked just like the thing I was looking at. And so what she was amazed about is that I didn't keep trying and trying and trying and trying and asking people for you know, advice about how I could do that. I just said, oh, can't do that. And so my paintings for the most part are about how I feel. And so it is the, what I am looking at um, is part of what it is that is going to go on the canvas, but it's going to be also that I can change my mind a lot. And uh, I love pastels the most. And what I love them for is their gestural thing, is, is I the idea of using a paintbrush with just a few strands is, is not the way that I like to paint. So I, so I really do like the gestural things of, of, in art. It's fun sometimes to think about which pictures are my favorite, which paintings, and why. And it isn't just about the paint and the brush. It has to be uh, something that I'm surprised by and or as a challenge. And one of the paintings that comes to mind is really related to someone I took a, a, an art class from and he was a well-known uh, artist in Door County. And he said he would never paint autumn and he would never paint um, a sunset. And I thought that that was ridiculous to hear. And so one day when Al and I were sitting down by our, uh, on our waterfront watching um, the, the sun, um, 
I had brought my painting things down there with me and I just set about to do it and I decided that, um, you know, he, the fact that he said, you know, heavens, you can't do that, about, well, I'll see if I can do that. And I like that. I like the painting that shows the sparkling dissipation of light um, with, a, with a light uh, amount of um, waves in the, across the lake. And there's another painting that involved um, props. And that was, I had Al give me his, um, his denim um, raincoat. And I put it around me. And then I had him take moving pictures of me opening it so that I had, that I would have it closed and then I would open it and I'd have it closed and then I would open it. And that was a sense of that I, in reading my poetry, I always have this sense of, um, of both pride, well, pride, pleasure, and little anxiety. And that after I publish each of my books, I had the sense of Here's my heart. And the gesture was that I close this raincoat and then open it. It's, here's my heart. And then, oh, you know, I'm back to me in my own privacy. I did a series on placemats one year and I set up for myself the task for to do a piece of art that's called 50 songs I'd like to hear on the radio today and it was pre-technology and so I was over a period of several days or weeks jotting things down and so that's what I did of that's what I wanted to feed myself with and I also was interested in that I had put marks on in art with brushes, but I thought, what would it be like to have, to see my own handwriting uh, in, in art, and that that was an interesting thing to explore. During the time I was doing the placemat series, um, I was literally setting up uh, our silverware, our placemat, our napkin, and this was a, a political one, and it was when the United Nations was uh, facing a uh, vote. And it was interesting to me that down in the corner, Colin Powell's name is there, and he made the speech for the United States and since said that he would not today have said the same words uh, with the same perspective as he did then. This painting of a river going around a corner, a bend, is one of the ones that speaks to me on the arc of life and the, the fact that it will all end. And I have identified and told my family that that's one that I want next to me uh, in the room that I must eventually be in. This was my first oil painting and I went down to Green Bay to paint with a friend and I made that bouquet for her and it was her birthday and she was going to help me um, get brave enough to do paint with oils and so I call that painting um, a bouquet for Marjorie and it is the cover of my second book of poetry. Every time I walk into the gallery, my gallery, uh, it makes me happy, um, particularly if it's clean, if, if everything is uh, in place so that the art is more important than the boots and the jackets on the floor. But I look at, around and I think of 15 years, I made these. 
And that amazes me. It amazes me that I can change um, so that I am doing things from um, the sky, looking out the window when I'm flying, when we're coming into Green Bay is that one. And that's a, those are the lakes. And that one um, is also from the sky, showing the routes to something. And that's where I was also said, you are not lost, even if you do not know where you are. It's all part of the journey, isn't it? I've only painted two big paintings and it was, they were ambitious. Um, I knew what I wanted to paint. I knew what I wanted to um, accent. And I was in the period uh, that I'm really still in, which is I don't do faces. Every time I do a face, it makes the painting look worse. It looks like I glued on, you know, eyes, nose, and mouth. And so these are more symbolic, but the her hands knitting is to me a beautiful thing that I have caught. And that was, we were sitting watching a young man in uh, France, um, and I think it was the day that he got that dog and the caressing of that, getting to know each other. And I had one person who saw them say that my paintings without faces seem like they're like from the devil. <laughs> and I just say, no, just as I can't draw noses and mouths and eyes. I love my studio. I come in here uh, to enjoy my studio and what I've done up to that point than I do going forward these days. And But I see the last 15 or 20 years of what I, what I did. I had a really huge project about 10 or 12 years ago, um, which is I had so many books of my poetry um, left over that I decided I wanted to give them away. And I decided that I wanted to give them away by uh, trying to figure out how I could get them distributed by other people in their lives. And it would just be an open invitation to anyone who ever got that book to if something in this book is connected with something in your life, in what way? And so they answered questions and then probably more than 50 people sent in art. And I'm pretty amazed. I've got um, some of the lined up. They did stitcheries and paintings and uh, poems and essays. And there was a man who did reflections on starting up his uh, one engine plane and um, it was just amazing and I had an art exhibit uh, for two weeks of the Ripple Project and it went on for a long time afterward but I am now left with uh, scores of things and huge binders of the letters and I find myself uh, the realistic thing is I'm probably not going to do anything more with it, but it did uh, it did achieve its purposes and and I actually made a lot of friends, but there were strangers and people took it to their book club, you know, in their state and uh, people would write and say, I, I'd like a couple more. And now, now what I do is every so often I take them to some event in Door County and I say, is there anyone who doesn't have a copy of my book? The only picture that my mother had saved in scrapbooks uh, by the three children and the family I grew up in was this one by me. And it was my parents had taken me into Chicago from Rockford. Uh, and it was a rainy day and the theme of the six-year-olds going to Chicago from Rockford was uh, transportation to ride on all the different kinds of transportation. And so I'd probably never been in a taxi, I'd never been on an escalator, I'd never been on you know, the L. And so it was the big city. And 
my friend Marjorie told me that how someone paints when they're very, very young is very much like they're going to paint when they get older. And it is, it is that, um, that I, I felt was very satisfied and I love that I can remember making the marks with the chalk. Uh, when my mother was going to be 40 years old, my father gave her the choice of going to New York City or a mink coat. And this shows the person reflecting and my mother chose New York City. And I have a friend um, who's since moved away from Door County, but she said her father gave her mother the same two choices and her mother chose the mink coat. And as we stood there, um, she always has, um, is dressed up fancy. She always has lots of makeup on and her hair all done. And so I'm glad still that I, that I chose New York City too. Uh, I love photographing and I, um, one year in 2010, had a whole year of my photographs. And then I also combined it with a really important poem that's called, Now I Love Petals in Their Falling. And it is that I, I took places of the deterioration of, of beautiful flowers. Now I love petals in their falling. When I was young, I threw flowers in crystal vases away sooner when the first petals fell, when the leaves started curling, when pollen threatened to stain the linen tablecloth when I tired of them, when a bouquet felt like a reproach to my house whiffery, when my first thought when I glimpsed them was of the compost pile. Now I love petals in their falling, love leaves throughout their yellowing, curling, drying. Study the intensity of the color of the pollen on the granite collar counter that I can wipe out later. I photograph rose petal blankets nested beneath the bushes. Celebrate parrot tulips petal skirts around the maypole of the naked stalk. Wonder at the swollen seed pods that outlast the featured main attraction. I look in the mirror, glad I decided years ago to befriend each wrinkle.